Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about uh, variable costing and absorption costing. So I thought you'd like to take a look at um, the beautiful Greek island of Mykonos, which I hope to get to very soon, and hopefully some of you will as well. Ah, just a little calm before the storm, I guess. Okay, so this is chapter 19, and what we have here is kind of a version of a sample problem QS191. So we have some costs. We've got direct labor, material, variable overhead, um, total variable costs, fixed overhead for 10,000 units, total production costs. And I added a few things. I said, well, what if we sold 8,000 for 20 bucks each and we had some fixed operating expense of 25 grand? So how would that work? Okay. Absorption costing is another word for gap costing. So what we're absorbing is our fixed manufacturing expenses. So here's how it worked, and I'll have to go through this with you, see if we can make this thing work. So we sold um, 20,000, or we sold 8,000 at 20 bucks a piece. So under absorption costing, we've got 160 grand worth of cost. Okay, our variable cost. Hmm. is going to be, looks like, $9 a piece. Is that right? Yep, okay. So we've got uh, $8,000, just those we sold, times $9 for variable costs, so that's $72,000. Our fixed cost, I'm just going to use the total here. Fixed cost, ooh, oh no, we didn't sell them all, so, hmm. Uh, five dollars a piece. Interesting. All right. So five dollars a piece times eight thousand. What do we have? Forty thousand dollars. So our gross margin, which would appear in our income statement if we published it, minus our variable cost seventy-two, minus our fixed cost. Looks like $48,000. Operating expense, which we're saying is fixed, $25,000. So it looks as though our net income, $48,000 less $25,000. So we made $23,000. Okay? So I'll tell you now, if we produce and sell the same amount under both systems, absorption and variable, we're going to come out with the same net income. If we produce more than we sold, we'll have a higher net income under absorption costing. If we produce less than we sold, we're going to have a higher net income under variable costing. Well, let's see how that works. Hopefully I got that right. All right. Sales, well, it's going to be the same. We sold um, 8,000 units for 20 bucks a piece. It's like 160 grand. Variable cost, $9. So it's going to be the same. 8,000 units times 9 bucks, 72,000. Contribution margin is different from gross margin. It is going to be 160 grand less 72,000. 88 grand. Wow, big number. Uh, less our fixed manufacturing costs. Here we're going to take the total 50 grand. So we always expense all of our fixed costs and variable costing. So that's 50. And fixed operating expense, like office expense, administration, finance, uh, computers, whatever else we got. So our net income in this case is going to be 88,000 less. 50,000 less 25, 13,000. Wow, so what's our difference? Well, our difference, $10,000, is actually this 2,000 units that we made but didn't sell times five bucks a unit. So that comes out to 10 grand. So that's exactly where that is. And where is that money? That money is in our balance sheet under absorption costing but it goes to our income statement under variable costing. Okay, so there's some benefits to doing it this way. This is a much 
pure way to show your income statement. It's much better for planning. Helps you to realize the volume effect, uh, what you produce, how that affects your income. So this is a pretty popular way to do things. So that is the end of our lesson.